everyone welcome back to my channel so today I have a video for you that has been long requested and by long requested I mean it was requested a long time ago but I'm really excited to be finally showing you guys an informative shoulder workout when it comes to recording informative videos I kind of get a little carried away I end up doing more research and more research and I want to kind of tell everything on the subject. So this video might be a little bit long. Hopefully I keep you entertained the whole way through. So first I want to talk about the shoulder anatomy. I think this is important when understanding how to properly train your shoulders. Just a little tiny bit of anatomy, I promise, just a little bit. Most people, when they think of the shoulder, they're thinking of the top part of your shoulder and then this part of the shoulder, so kind of the capped bit. These two parts of the shoulder are the trapezius muscle or the traps and the deltoid which is the one that wraps over your shoulder onto your arm. More specifically the trapezius starts at the base of your neck and it runs down to the tip of your scapula. The delt muscle is a continuous set of muscle fibers that run from your clavicle which what is the term for that? A continuous set of muscle fibers that run from the tip of the clavicle and around the acromion and then back on the upper ridge of the scapulae or your shoulder blade. But usually they're grouped into three heads and those would be the anterior deltoid or the front delt, the lateral deltoid or the side delt and the posterior deltoid or the rear delt. In this video, I'm going to be more specifically speaking of and targeting the delt. So when I'm talking about shoulders, I'm talking about delts. The traps are a stronger muscle. They actually elevate the scapula, meaning that they allow you to shrug your shoulders up. They can kind of take over in a lot of the exercises that I'll be showing you guys today. So a really great tip is retracting and depressing your scapula. This will help take the traps out of the movement and will help you focus on using your delt a little bit more. More. Through a proper training program, the traps will get enough indirect work through your back exercises and even through some of these delt targeting exercises. You want to target the delts for kind of the aesthetic purposes, but of course there are muscles that are contained within the rotator cuff that are essential to move your shoulder joint around. The shoulder joint allows for the most movement of any limb. It allows our arm to move in almost 360 degrees in several different planes of motion through a large range of motion. Because it can do so much, it is pretty complicated and there's a lot of smaller muscles that if not warmed up properly, increase the risk of injury. So I've decided to include my shoulder warm up as well to kind of show you guys how I like to warm up my shoulders to reduce the chance of getting injured. So getting into the shoulder warm up, I want you to to be doing 10 to 15 reps of each of these. I'm going to be using a very, very light weight here. I'm only using 1.25 kg. The point isn't to be using a heavy or challenging weight. It's just to be moving your shoulder through the specific range of motion to warm it up. So for the first of the six warm up movements, I'm going to be doing straight arm lateral raises. These, I have my palms facing down and a tiny bend in my elbow. And I'm just trying to slowly lift the weight up and down, rotating around the shoulder pulling the weight away from my body in a slow and controlled manner. Next, I'm doing external rotations. These I'm using dumbbells, again, the really light dumbbells. However, you can do these with resistance bands. I'm doing them with dumbbells because I'm just trying to get the shoulder warmed up by moving through the range of motion and I don't need a particularly challenging resistance. Next, this one is a little bit more tricky, but it is a really effective warm up and I can feel my shoulders getting warm already at this point. So what I'm doing is I'm bending my elbow 90 degrees and I'm doing a lateral raise. When I get to the top such that my upper arm is parallel to the floor, then I'm doing an external rotation. I find it useful to think of doing them as two separate parts to one movement. So do the lateral raise first and then do the external rotation, then rotate back down and then lower the arm and repeat. For the fourth warm up, we're doing a rear delt raise. Again, we are doing 10 to 15 of each of these just until you feel warmed up through that range of motion. Here, I'm bending over such that my torso is nearly parallel to the ground and I have my arms in what I like to call a W formation. So I'm kind of like making W with my arms, if that makes sense. In the next warm up movement, we're doing a band circumduction. For these, 
I usually like to use a linear resistance band because it has a little bit more give to it, but today this was all I had access to. I am holding the band at a comfortable distance apart and then rotating it back around. And this is a great warm up because it also doubles as a dynamic stretch. Finally, we're finishing off the warm up with a band pull apart. Again, this isn't the band that I usually use. This one is a little too much resistance. I prefer it to be a little bit stretchier. What I'm doing here is literally just pulling the band apart and down so that I'm getting that adduction movement as well. And a reminder just to keep your shoulder blades back and down and pinched together. Otherwise, this is going to just be a trap exercise. That's the warm up all finished. So moving on to the actual shoulder workout. And again, when I'm saying shoulders, we are targeting the delts here. The front delt is usually overtrained in most people and that's because it's really easy to train the front delt. The majority of delt work that you're getting from any pressing movement is the anterior delt. Most people do a ton of pressing or they prioritize it. What I'm showing you guys here today is a workout that prioritizes more of the middle and the rear delts. The side and the rear delts are what give you the nice 3D capped look and a more defined shoulder. All right, that's enough talk. Let's get into the workout. I'm starting off the dumbbell lateral raise. I like to do a warm up slash a test set to determine what weight I'm going to want to be using for the rest of my sets. So I'm going to be doing four sets of 10 to 12 with the last set being a drop set and I'll explain that a little bit more later. Usually I increase the weight each set until I reach a heaviest weight for my last one to two sets. The reason why I'm starting off with the lateral raise is because it prioritizes the middle delt. Starting off with a shoulder press, although it's a compound movement, is not going to allow us to do that. So I'm going to give you guys a few tips on how to perfect your lateral raise. If you implement certain cues, you can help reduce trap involvement and help target your middle delts. I have a slight forward lean. I'm internally rotating, meaning that my palms are facing down. I have a slight bend in my elbow. The more you bend your elbow, the easier it's gonna be. I'd suggest starting off with just a slight bend, and then if you need to bend your elbows a little more as you progress through the sets, then feel free to do that. And I want you to lift the weight such that your upper arm is in line with your torso. So that means that your hand is going to be a little bit in front of your body. Your wrist should never be higher than your elbow and your elbow should never be higher than your shoulder. And a major key for this exercise is to lift the weight up and away from your body. So as if you're trying to move the weight as far from your body as possible, and you're gonna wanna control the weight on the way down and repeat. So as you can see, as the sets have gone on, I have used increasing momentum. So meaning that I'm swinging a little bit more. This is fine. This helps you ensure that you're challenging yourself adequately. Obviously you wanna keep it under control, but a little bit of swinging is okay. The last set, I said was a drop set. So you're gonna do your 10 to 12 reps. Then you're gonna drop the weight back a few pounds and then do as many reps as possible until you reach failure. The second exercise I'm doing is a dumbbell rear delt raise. I like to do a rear delt exercise early in the workout as well because I find that the rear delts often get ignored or shifted to the end of a workout. And I really like the look of well-developed rear delts and I find that if they're not given special attention, they can tend to lag behind. So by giving them the priority at the beginning of the workout, you're allocating more energy to them rather than tacking them on at the end where you're going to be a little bit more fatigued and they're just not gonna get the same attention and energy. I'm bending over such that my torso is parallel to the ground and I have my arms in a W formation. I'm externally rotating, that way my palms are facing the ground and the back of my hands are leading. Brad Schoenfeld et al. showed that a neutral grip as I'm doing is best for targeting the rear delt. And again, a really key cue for this exercise is to lift the weight up and away from your body and that's going to really help you use your delt rather than squeezing your shoulder blades back and using too much traps. As in the last exercise you just want to control the weight on the way down and then repeat. 
for the third exercise, we're finally doing a shoulder press. I also like to do an overhead press, but today I just felt like doing a dumbbell shoulder press. We're going to be doing three sets of eight to 10. I like to increase my weight each set as I become more acclimatized to the exercise. Just to reiterate, my shoulder blades are back and down. I have my chest up and you want to have your elbows flared so that they are in line with your body and you're pressing up until your arms are almost completely extended, but you don't want to lock your elbows. And then as you lower the weight, you just want to dip your elbows just below parallel and then repeat. A good tip for this one is to try not to let your wrists cave in and bend your elbows too much. You want to keep your forearms straight up and down or perpendicular to the ground. The shoulder press is a little bit more of an intermediate or an advanced exercise because it requires a lot of shoulder stability, but it's great for building that stability and strengthening your shoulder all around. So definitely don't be afraid to layer as you learn how to keep the dumbbells stable. You may not know this, but the shoulder press uses almost four times as much anterior delt as lateral delt. This is based on EMG research comparing mean percent of maximum voluntary contraction. The shoulder press is essentially a pure front delt exercise. For the fourth exercise, we're having a superset, which is a combination of two different exercises. So for the first exercise of the superset, I'm doing a cable upright row slash front raise combination. We're using the straight bar attachment. You can also use the easy bar attachment, which is the kind of bent bar. Grip the bar as if you're going to be doing a front raise, but I want you to make a diamond shape with your arms. Take a bit of a closer grip and hold the bar closer to your body such that your elbows make a around a 90 degree angle. Take a few steps away from the machine, bend your knees a little bit to brace yourself and lean into the exercise. By leaning forward, you're actually shifting more of the emphasis to your side delt. Start with a lighter weight for this one because it actually is surprisingly difficult. Here in one of the sets, I did drop it too low though, and then I increase it after that. I'm never afraid to adjust my weight either up and down between sets or even interrupt my set if it's just not a weight that's working for me. I'd rather not be feeling like I'm not doing the exercise properly with too much weight or feeling like I could just go on forever with too light of weight. So never be afraid to adjust the weight if you need to. For the super set, you're going to do a set of 10 to 12 on the upright row and then you're going to immediately go into the cable rear delt raise and do a set of 12 to 15 on one arm and then immediately after you're going to do another set of 12 to 15 with your opposite arm then you take a rest and then you start the super set over again i'm using the handle attachment it's really similar to the dumbbell rear delt raise so i'm side on to the machine i'm bending my knees and getting my torso nearly parallel to the ground make sure to tuck your shoulder blades back and puff your chest looking back at this footage i don't think i'm doing as great of a job as i should be so you guys can definitely do better than me here you can experiment with different grips I personally prefer to do the W style as I talked about before. I find that it best activates my rear delts, but some people will find their rear delts react better to a pronated grip, which is an overhand grip. Another thing that you'll see me doing here is I like to lean into the machine on the eccentric, which is the lowering portion of the lift, just so that I can get a little bit of momentum for the raise. It's that initial part of the raise that is the most difficult so sometimes getting a little boost can help you get in some more reps and again a key for this exercise is to pull up and away from your body so you're imagining that you're moving your wrist as far away from your shoulder as possible for the cable rear delt raise i am doing sets of 12 to 15. Love working with cables for shoulders because you get that near constant line of tension if you don't have access to cables you can substitute for bands instead. Moving into the fifth exercise, I'm doing a cable lateral raise. As you guys can probably tell by now, I love doing lateral raises for delts. I find that they've been the most effective in bringing up my delts over the last year. So I love to incorporate a couple different variations in each of my shoulder workouts. The cable lateral raise, it's gonna be very similar to the dumbbell raise variation. You're going to 
internally rotate, swivel your shoulder joints so that you're into more of a thumbs down position. And you're going to pull up and away from your body, trying to move your wrist as far away from your shoulder as possible. And this is going to help you use your delt rather than shrugging up with your traps. This one, you're definitely gonna feel your traps a little bit more. In one study, it showed that this is actually more effective for the traps than an actual shrug. So this is what I mean with you getting some indirect trap work in, and I don't think it's overly necessary for us women to do direct trap work like shrugs and stuff like that. But of course, it's up to you. If you like to do it, then no one's stopping you. And you're gonna go from one side right to the opposite side with no rest in between. We're doing three sets of 12 to 15. And I also advise if you do have a weaker side, whenever you're doing any unilateral work, which means one side at a time, you should always do the weaker side first. For the last exercise, I am doing a cable rear delt row. I really like finishing off with this exercise. I find it is a little bit of a back exercise as well. We're doing three sets of 15 to 20. Again, I want your shoulders back and down, like for every exercise in this entire workout. <laughs> Sorry for repeating myself so many times. So we're gonna be using the lat pull down with a wide grip attachment. You're gonna wanna start with a lighter weight, just as in the cable bent arm front raise. It is a little bit more difficult than you would suspect. Put one foot up on the bench, or I have it on the little thigh, breast thingy. You're gonna alternate which leg is up each set. I'm leaning back so that I can pull the cable towards my body at a 90 degree angle rather than pulling straight down as you would in a lat pull down. And I'm gonna keep my elbows as flared as possible. The goal is to rotate your elbows around your shoulder joint and you don't need to bring the bar all the way to your chest. You can leave a good few inches there and you're just gonna stop pulling when your elbows are in line with your shoulders or maybe a little bit behind, but you don't wanna pull so that your elbows are much behind your body because if your elbows go too far back, your rear delts become useless in that position. What I'm trying to do here is attain pure transverse extension. Aside from building your rear delt, this exercise is great for developing overall shoulder girdle strength and stability. And because unlike a lot of rows, you're using a much lighter weight, it helps to condition and build the smaller, more intricate muscles of the back, such as the teres minor, the infraspinatus, and the rhomboids. Dashing through the snow In a one-horse open sleigh Alright guys, so that is my entire shoulder workout with extra informative tidbits. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did and you'd like to see more videos like this, please give me a big thumbs up. So I actually do enjoy doing these type of videos, albeit they are a lot of work but um, it's worth it because I know you guys really appreciate them. The next fitness video that I'm filming in a couple of days is going to be an informative glute workout in the gym. And I also want to do some at-home fitness videos and there will be some food related slash nutrition related videos as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna shut up now and I will see you in my next video. Bye.